Hey friends, John Gregor Bear with the Truth Factor. Trust me, today is February 10th, 2024. What we do on this YouTube channel is I share with you my personal testimony of how I came to faith in Jesus Christ in 1991 through a supernatural encounter that I had with God in my apartment. I wasn't raised in the church. I didn't go to church growing up. My dad was a professor at a university. The last thing on my mind was becoming uh, religious or join any kind of organized religion. I, I'm just not into all that stuff. I'm into free thinking. That's what I am. A free, a free thinker. I don't believe God is religious. I believe God is life. That's who God is. He's the God of all living, the Bible said. Actually, Jesus said that. God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of all living. So if you want to know who God is, you need to connect to life. That's what you're going to connect to. And I was thinking, we're going to talk about a subject today. Uh, we'll see where it goes. I'm not sure where it's going to go. But uh, if you want to hear my testimony, go watch my last video. Talked about the gospel is a way of life. Watch that. I go into my I go into my testimony a little bit and drop some information on you. Uh, it's a, also a good uh, it's a good explanation of repentance. What repentance is? It's not has nothing to do with sin. Although when you repent and believe the gospel, you're going to be led away from sin. You'll be led into relationship to God. So. Go watch that video. There's a lot of good information on it called The Gospel is a Way of Life. It's not a religion, okay? And so that's what we do here on this YouTube channel is I share with you information that is, that is oriented towards uh, covenant relationship to God and what that looks like. We don't, I don't talk to you about religion. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit about religion today and why it's the problem. This is the problem. Religion is the problem. It's not the solution. So you need to get out of religion and get into relationship to God. And you can do that. I'm going to share with you more on all my YouTube. If you just watch my these videos, they're going to direct you on how you enter into relationship to God. It's not about religion. It's about you taking steps of faith towards God, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and His teachings. That's what repentance is. It's not... It's not you know, thinking about sin and turning from your sin, though, though that could be part of it. But what it is, it's more about what you think. It's about what you believe. It's about shifting what you believe, shifting what you believe from your natural mind, the way you were brought up maybe, or the way you see the world. It's about repenting from your thinking about the world and your belief and your faith and turning your faith to Jesus Christ and what, what God has already done and what Jesus has already accomplished. And so it's turning from what you do to what Jesus has done and believing in what Jesus said in His words and just trusting that He's telling the truth. It's that simple. And as you do that, you're going to work out your salvation. Okay? And so that's what repentance is. So, before we start, uh, I want to pray. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you to fill me with your spirit and to lead me and guide me in this message as we talk about issues related to religion and how to rectify that problem. I pray, Father, that you'll open my eyes of understanding and that you'll give me all the scriptures I need to present this message clearly and that you will fulfill your purpose in this video that I do here. And I thank you, Lord, for any good thing that happens uh, from this message. And I just give you all the glory and all the praise for it. And I pray that you open the eyes of understanding of everyone who hears my words, that, Lord, you would speak directly to their heart and you would communicate to them what you're trying to tell them so that they can learn what it means to take a step of faith and begin to believe. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Okay, so you, you got to think about, let's think about something. You know, Judaism and, and Christianity ought to be together like hand in glove. Because Judaism is the original covenant, the Mosaic law. And, and if you follow history, it should just transition clearly into Christianity. Because that's what history did. That's what happened. We went from Judaism into history. But why is it Judaism and Christianity, they don't even mix? Well, there's reasons for it, and it's all related to religion. It's not related to the truth. It's related to religion and religious people and religious institutions. That's why. Okay, so how can we start this conversation? How, how can I start this, Lord? So here's, here's what, here's what uh, you know, if you'll, if you'll just 
this is why the covenants are so important. This is why the written word of God is so important because the written word of God does not get into religion. The written word of God is God's word. It's what God says. And so if you put your faith and trust in what God says and quit following these religious institutions and what they tell you about the gospel or what they tell you, then you will stay out of religion. Just read the word of God for yourselves. Paul said this, you have no need for a man to teach you because God can teach you. God's going to teach you. Okay, and how does God teach you? Through the written word of God. Through God's word, you will learn who God is. Okay, that's what it is. Through God's word, you will learn who God is. That's why it's important. I did a video not too long ago on your faith and the written word of God. Why it's so important. Why? Because it's you applying your faith, your belief in the written word of God. And that's what's going to change your life. That's what's going to lead you into relation, covenant relationship to God. It's your faith in the written word of God. You should go watch that. Because what, and, 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 what it is, is when you believe in the written word of God, you are connecting with God. And that's what it's all about. It's about relationship. It's about you connecting to God. Jesus said this, and this is called working out your salvation. Jesus said this, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom the Father has sent, that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What's that mean? It means that you believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ. So when you read the Word of God, you pay attention, you learn, you, you look at God's Word, and you look what Jesus taught and what Jesus said and how Jesus lived his life and how the prophets, what they taught and what they said and, and how, what Moses taught and said, what the, what the judges said. You go, you go all the way to the Old Covenant. Hey, boo-boo. All the way to the Old Testament, you can go believe in those words. And as you believe in those words, God, you're connecting with God. See, God is a spirit, the Bible says, but God is also his word. That's who he is. So when you connect to the word of God, you are connecting to God's spirit. And, God, and, and what happens is, as you take these steps of faith and keep believing in the word of God, you're embarking on a spiritual journey. And at some point in that journey, the Spirit of God is going to begin to take over. He's going to begin to show you things. And this is where your relationship is. It's all based in God revealing who He is to you. And He does that through your faith in the Word of God. Does that make sense? It's your faith in the Word of God. See, I said this. The covenant of God. The covenant of God is an agreement between God and mankind. Okay, and so God works through his covenant, but he also works through your faith. So when you apply your faith to the written word of God, then you are embarked, you are connecting to the covenant of God. And it's through this connection that God can begin to work through you, that God begin to, can be, begin to reveal things to you. Okay, so the Bible says this about God. And this is where people get it all messed. It's, it's almost like relig this is where religion gets you all scramble-brained. Re religion will get you scramble-brained as though it's something that you have to achieve. As though repentance is something that you have to achieve. No, it's not that at all. What it is is repentance, as we talked about yesterday. It's just you choosing to believe on the work of Jesus Christ. It's you choosing to believe in the Word of God. It's you choosing to believe. That's repentance. You're, you're, you're taking your thoughts and, uh, and, and replacing them with God's thoughts, what God says. So as you believe, repent and believe on the gospel of Jesus Christ, then you are, uh, you are connecting with God. And you're just agreeing with God. I, I, I shared my testimony, I think, the last couple of videos ago. We talked about the one. there was one moment in my journey of faith with God that God gave me the scripture of Amos 3.3. 3. And Amos 3.3 3 says this, Unless two be in agreement, how can they walk together? That's what he says. So, so you can apply this universally. This is one of those spiritual absolutes. It's like this has to do with relationship, to any, any relationship. It has to do with your friendship. It could be with your marriage, your spouse. It could be with your children. It could be with all. It can relate to any relationship. What you'll find is there must be a, 
there must be uh, some semblance of connection, uh, uh, agreement in, in two parties in order to have a relationship. If the two parties disagree about everything, they're not going to have a relationship. Well, God is no different. Unless you begin to agree with God in what God's Word says, then you can't have a relationship to God. And that's primarily why so many young people today don't, they, they're so... They're disconnected from God because they don't agree with God about anything. They, they think that knowing who God is is religion. It's not religion. This is the problem. Religion's the problem. It's not that the solution is relationship. It's you agreeing with God. That's what it is. Unless two be in agreement, how can they walk together? So if you'll begin to trust God, you'll begin to place, well, like I did, I, put, I, I got to a place in life when nothing was working for me. Go listen to my testimony in my last video the gospel is the way of life i got into a place in, in life where nothing was working for me why because i was disconnected from god i wasn't agreeing with god about anything i didn't want anything to do with god i didn't want religion in my life i didn't want jesus in my life i didn't want anything well my my life got stuck but but the moment i repented when i heard a simple message when i say repent i heard a simple message on the gospel where the evangelist he wasn't preaching or anything, he just was was laying out a presentation, and the presentation was centered on the the theme of the presentation was this: uh, if you reject God, the the, the 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 sin of rejecting God, he called it the sin of rejecting God, and basically his presentation was: if you choose to reject God in your life, these things will begin to happen in your life, and he began to lay out all the things that happen and as he's going through them all i'm going like yeah that's that's what i do i do that every day and so it was he was just reading my mail and it was perfect because everything was absolutely correct and uh, he just used scripture to go through the whole thing and as i'm listening to this guy because i was like 30 at the time around 30 years old i didn't even think about my spiritual life i was like ah, i was just having fun doing you know single having fun doing things and i, I wouldn't even consider my spiritual life but for the first time in my life I began to I began to kind of evaluate. You know what? My spiritual life is a lot more important than I thought. And then I got really got to the place. By the end of his message, I was like, you know, I think this might be the reason why I have all my problems because I've rejected God. And so I prayed a simple prayer, and the prayer was. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me for ignoring you. Forgive me for rejecting you. Forgive me for mocking you. We went through a whole list of forgive me, Jesus. And they were all true. Every one of them I had done. And, and then we ended with, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Teach me who you are because I want to know about this new life. And that's what I was after. I wanted a new life. And uh, so I prayed that prayer. Three weeks later, I had that encounter with God. And I, I go into it on my last video. Go watch it. The, uh, the gospel is a way of life. And, and so God changed my life just by simply agreeing with him about sin and, and, and just saying, God, I'm, I've sinned against you. I just agreed and said, yeah, you're, you're right. I'm a sinner. I just agreed. I realized I was a sinner. And so if I just, I agreed with God and just gave me that first little foundation to start from. And once I got to that little first step, I could go from there. And then, then when God showed up, and revealed himself to me, I took the next step. I began to read the Bible more and more. God began to open up the Word of God to me, and God began to speak to me through his Word as I placed my faith in Jesus Christ and began to believe on the words of God, uh, God and the gospel as I began to believe that Jesus paid the penalty for my sin. And as I began to believe in the words of Jesus Christ, my life began to change. And what was happening was God began to come alive in me. Okay, And this is how... This is how the uh, salvation works. It's just you believing on him whom the Father has sent. So God sent Jesus to usher in the new covenant with John the Baptist. And he comes preaching the kingdom of God. Moses and the prophets didn't preach the kingdom of God. Rabbinic Judaism, they don't even talk about the kingdom of God. Why? Because it's the new covenant. The new covenant is founded in the Messiah, Jesus Christ. That's what the new covenant is founded in. Okay, And so... You get religion that creates all this division. So, so you'll have the Jews who are angry because, you know, they have right. To, you know, Jewish people have been persecuted for so long. But, 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 but you get to a place where they can use that as, a, as an excuse not to take in, <clears throat> not to even read the New Covenant. I mean, the fact that Jesus was a Jew, Jesus was a, 
from the house of David. Both his parents were from the house of David. And uh, Jesus was not a political figure. Jesus was not working with the Roman government authorities to try to, 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 to control Israel and make sure Israel was safe. Or, no, Jesus was purely a pure-hearted pure-hearted Jew who was preaching the kingdom of God. He was obeying the, the, he was obeying what God told him to do. That's what it was. Jesus was printing that. And so why would you not read the book about a, a, about a holy man who went about preaching the gospel to the poor, binding up the brokenhearted, proclaiming liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison doors to those who are bound? What in the world could be so off about somebody who was doing that? See, that ought to tell you if you're a religious Jew. That ought to tell you there's something wrong with your thinking. Your thinking's not right. There's something off in your thinking. And, you, and what, what I, would, I, would, I would point out to you, and I'm going to confront you with it, it's your religion. Your religion is keeping you from God. And your religion is separating you. Now, I'm not knocking all your religion if it, if it draws you to God. But let me tell you something. If you haven't, if you're a religious, if you're a Jew, a religious Jew, and you have not even read the New Covenant, you, you are missing you're Messiah. You are missing a pure, a pure man who went about ushering in a new covenant. Just as Moses ushered in a new covenant at the time of Moses, Jesus ushers in this new covenant called the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's, it becomes not just, a, not just a covenant for his people Israel, but it's a covenant for all the world. It's an opportunity for the whole world to get to know who this God of Israel is. So why would anybody be against that. Think about that. Why would anybody be against that? There's something wrong with that. And that's what the problem is. And I, I contend with you that it's religion. This is what religion does. It separates. It doesn't. And I'm not saying this is all about us all coming together and saying kumbaya. No, it's not that. I'm talking about truth. I'm trying to get you to the truth. And the truth is this. Jesus comes preaching the kingdom of God to usher in this new covenant. So if you're not in the covenant of Jesus Christ, you're not in a covenant with God. You're, you're in something else. You're into some religion. That's what I'm telling you. Jesus comes to confirm the Abrahamic promises and the Abrahamic covenant, to complete the Torah and the Mosaic law, and to, and to reestablish the everlasting covenant as it was in the Garden of Eden. So Jesus comes to, 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 to provide one covenant as it was in the beginning when Adam was uh, made in the Garden of Eden to restore that initial bond between God and man. That's what he does. He comes to restore that. And he does that through his life, through, through the gospel and through the work of Jesus Christ who was, who was crucified. He was buried. He was crucified, died. He was buried. And on the third day, God rose him from the grave. And he's now sitting at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession to all those who place their faith in him. It's This is the new covenant. When you begin to repent and believe on that story, and you be begin to believe on the words of Jesus Christ, and you read the, you know, read the old covenant too, read the, believe on the words of Moses, believe on the words of Jeremiah, believe on the words of Amos, believe on the words of Isaiah, believe on the words of Daniel, believe on him whom the Father has sent. So if you believe on the written word of God, you are working out your salvation. Why do I say that? Because the Messiah taught that. He said, this is the work of God, that you believe on him whom the Father has sent. Not to believe in a religion. You don't believe in the rabbis got their, you know, you don't believe in this new reformed religion. No, you believe in the written word of God. That's how you work out your salvation. Okay, so I think I've preached a little bit on that. And we talked about religion a little bit and how you need to get out of religion and you need to get into the Word of God, the written Word of God, and specifically you need to look into the covenant of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you why. Jesus is the King of the Jews. And Jesus, both parents came from the house of David. They were Jews. They were, Jew they were from the tribe of Judah, from the house of David. Jesus fulfilled all these. The problem is this. Here's what religion does. Religion distorts Jesus fulfilled so many, over 300 prophecies that are written in the, in the, uh, in the, in the uh, Tanakh. Jesus fulfilled over 300 of them through Isaiah, through Jeremiah, 300, 300. 
But what religion does, it'll distort that and say, no, he didn't do this. And they, they try to paint it in a different light. That's called distortion. That's called lies. That's a lie. The problem is religion has a mindset that if God doesn't do it the way I think, then it's not God. That's a lie. That's man. Let me tell you, God chooses who the Messiah is. God chooses how he fulfills his prophecies, not man. And if you can't see it, it's because you're blinded by religion. Religion has blinded you. So this is John Gray Bear. I'm going to encourage you to take the John 21 day challenge. What you'll do is you take the Gospel of John. It has 21 chapters. Read one chapter a day every day for 21 days. What you're doing, and you can read it in the morning, and I suggest you read it out loud. What you're doing is you're reading John's Gospel. You're reading a historical narrative of the life of Jesus Christ according to the Apostle John who walked with Jesus, who talked with Jesus, who learned under Jesus. You're going to hear his version of who Jesus Christ is. His testimony of this is who Jesus the Son of God is. And so as you read that chapter every day, it'll take you at 15-20 minutes a day, you are connecting with God. And as you'll connect with God every day for 21 days, for like 20 minutes in the morning, I believe God's going to start showing you some things. Why? Because He's the Almighty God. He's the Creator. He, he can speak to you in so many ways. He can reveal things to you. He can change your life. He can do miracles. He can do what, what, what He wants to do. And what, what, what God will do is He will meet you where you are, just as you are, how you are. He's going to speak to you in a unique way that only you will understand it because you're you and God made you in his image. So he's going to begin to communicate to you at your level just the way you are. This is the beauty of the new covenant. God wants personal relationship with every unique individual on the earth. When you come to Christ, you don't lose your identity. You gain your identity. You gain who you are. Why? Because you shall know the truth about yourself, and the truth will make you free. Jesus said that, the, the Word of God says this, God is not willing that anyone should perish or be lost or go to hell, God, but that all should come to repentance and into a knowledge of Jesus Christ. What is repentance? It's believing on the finished work of the gospel, on what Jesus did. That's all it is, is putting your faith and trust in what Jesus did, believing in the words of Jesus Christ. You are repenting from your way of thinking and turning to God. That's all, that's what repentance is. So take the John 21 day chapter. After 21 days, then you can make a decision. Are you, after you, you can look at your life over those 21 day period and say, do you want to keep going with Jesus or not? You can answer that question. Just why not find out for yourself? Why not read the new, the, the gospel of John? And then if you want to keep going, read Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Just keep going. And God will change your life. See, it's not about religion. It's about your relationship, your covenant, new covenant relationship with God through Jesus Christ. This is John Gregory Bear with the Tooth Factor. Encouraging you, open your mind to the ways of God. Open your heart to love God. You just might be surprised to catch the next video.